Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about Krita. Krita is an open source natural painting application and it has come a really long way in the last couple of years. We now have full on animation support and a ton more in it. And this is now being talked about because Krita 5 beta was just released and this is the next major thing. A lot of new features in here. So we're gonna take a quick look at Krita itself. Then we're gonna jump into the release notes and find out what is new in the beta. And there's some things to be really excited about. First off, the general user interface got a lot I love this is new sets of icons and so on and so forth. On top of that, there was a lot of improvements behind the scenes. They completely rewrote the resource management system. Uh, there is a new uh, plugin on the back end for SQL to make things run faster and so on. So not really this is the kind of stuff I can demonstrate to you, but Krita itself generally should just perform better and be more scalable towards the future. Now, one thing I can show you is a new two point perspective system, which is really cool. So if you're working on uh, perspective drawing, uh, you can set it up with this setup right here. So you can set up, uh, you know, two, if you're doing perspective based drawing, this uh, should help you out there. Another major difference is they now have support for my paint brushes. So a number of your brushes have, uh, you'll have a whole lot of new options with your painting options. My Paint is another open source effort that is about making you know natural media painting applications. And we'll get into a little bit of the details of that in just a second. Now, another new feature they added in here is available under, let's see, right here, we go to uh, Dockers and we have Recorder. So if you're the type of person who wants to do tutorial or something, you can now set up a recorder like so. So I'm gonna go ahead, set this one up, save it to my desktop like so. Uh, and you can set it, save it in JPEG, capture every second or so on and so forth. And then you can basically just start recording. So let's show some of these brushes in action. So let's go ahead and grab one of these guys. And oh, we're still in that mode. All right, so let's draw. So there we go. Exciting stuff. Let's pick something different and we'll draw there. And uh, let's do whatever that thing is. Oh, that's a, that's a smudger. That's not gonna do much. And here, all right, and let's make some red. And we are good to go. Another artistic masterpiece from me. So there you see um, the, the brush engine sort of to a degree in effect, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop here. By the way, in order to get this to work, you do need to have uh, FFmpeg installed. And then you basically just export out your results like so. Uh, you can pick, uh, so you do have to give it the path to FFmpeg right there. Uh, pick the location where you want it to be. So yeah, sure. And we'll call this uh, my awesome art dot mp4 and we'll export that out and what this will do is basically create a little video for you so boom so if you want to do time lapses of your artwork you can easily do so like so uh, definitely a nice new feature uh so again a lot of the improvements in creative 5 are um, system level behind the scenes basically just to make things perform better and so on and such a simple example i can't really showcase uh that kind of functionality there's also some neat new tools in there for animation and storyboarding so let's head on over to the release notes so here you can see this is the Krita blog uh, this isn't technically the release notes this is a, kind of the overview and i'm going to use this one it's going to save some time because uh, it kind of highlights uh the top level features here so this is the the short list of highlights. So the new resource system they've been working on for five years. Again, hard to demonstrate something like that. Uh, gradients got improved, better dithering and wide gamut gradients. Uh, performance improvements thanks to the, oh sorry, I said SQL. I uh, should have said little CMS uh, fast float plugin. So you should see performance in that end. Uh, My Paint, which again is another open source project for doing natural media brushes and paints and such. Uh, that engine has been integrated into Krita. Uh, completely rewritten color smudge brush engine, a redesigned animation timeline docker, clone flames, for, uh, clone frames for animation, updated animation curves, docker, transform mask animation, new storyboarding feature. Uh, we'll see that in just a second. Refreshed icons and a UI polish support for HEIV, AVIF and web P file formats, improved TIFF support, the painting recorder we saw in action there, the two point perspective we saw in action there, uh, in stack transform tool previews, uh, paint, uh, paste into layer instead of pasting the clip as a new layer, and GMIC for Mac OS. And to be honest, I have no idea what that actually means. But if you wanna get into more depth of what any of this means, uh, the full release notes, of course, I will link these in the linked article down below. Uh, they go into a lot more detail. So you can see uh, the underlying, the new resource system, uh, it takes up 200 megabytes less RAM, for example. It does use SQLite. Okay, so I just mixed up things. So they use the new plugin, but they also use uh, SQLite as the core of their uh, resource handling. So I am not completely wrong. Uh, so basically it just handles resources, brushes, uh, 
presets, gradients, palettes, and so on better uh, and less fragile. So it should make things better going forward. There is a new resource manager in place. Uh, not the sexiest thing, but it's definitely one of those things that makes a program better and more scalable for the future. Uh, we've got, again, improved gradients and uh, better dithering options available. Uh, we've got uh, the My Paint Bush engine is now integrated in, rewritten smudge, and so on and so forth. Again, a number of improvements on the animation. They redesigned the animation um, timeline docker. Uh, you can see it in action here if you so wish. So this is actually one of those areas where even just a few years ago, Krita did not have animation support at all. Now it has like all kinds of, um, you know, we're into second, third generation of UI polish type stuff here. It's come a long way on the animation side of things. I redesigned animation uh, curves docker. Uh, you can now clone frames, uh, transform mask animations, import videos as animations. That's actually kind of cool. So if you're doing uh, rotoscopy or whatever, uh, nice to bring in a background source for your animation there. Uh, again, number of file format options there. We got the new storyboarding. I said I would get back to that. Uh, this is from uh, Summer of Code, by the way. So Google Summer of Code is something Google basically gives money to open source projects to hire students during the summer to get projects done. And one of them is storyboard docker can be used to plan the shots and storytelling of complex um, shorts or films, or if you put those into one word, shilms. Uh, Docker uh, does not just allow you to collect in and note scenes, but also uh, a wide variety of export options such as PDF and SVG. Uh, the icons got uh, a good set, and the, the UI in general kind of got a bunch of uh, little tweaks and improvements there. Uh, file formats improvements, we've already kind of covered those things there. Uh, the two perspective tool um, for uh, perspective, the, uh, some layer improvements, and so on and so forth. So again, if you want to get into the, the weeds of what all was in this release, uh, you can check them out right there. Now, uh, Krita itself uh, is an open source project. It is coincidentally available at krita.org. Uh, it is available for download for um, Windows, Mac, and Linux, uh, which is definitely nice. Uh, also available on uh, Windows Storm, Steam Store, and the Epic Store, if you so wish. Um, Paid versions, uh, automatic updates, new version comes out, store feed the money with supports credit development. So it's one way to support them in their development is if you want to buy it on one of those stores, for example. Uh, you can also donate to them if you so wish, uh, help support this project. Uh, it is also an open source project. Um, it's available up on GitHub. I will link this down below as well. So if you want to contribute to it, uh, if you are a C++ programmer, uh, that is the primary language that Krita is written in. In terms of license, I believe it is GPL. Yeah, it's under the GPL license. Uh, that That's a pretty good license for fully released software. Not so great for SDKs and frameworks and such, but for uh, software like this, if you want to keep people from basically um, selling it or commercializing it and not releasing their source code, uh, the GPL is very effective in that regard. So that is that. So really, that is it. Uh, Krita Beta 5 just released a pretty major release. Of, again, uh, some of the major changes there are behind the scenes, like the new resource system, again, using SQL. So thankfully, I wasn't wrong there. And uh, some speed improvements across the board. Uh, the new MyBrush uh, system systems in there, improvements to animation, improvements to the file format exports, the new storyboarding aspect. There's quite a bit to like in here, the improved gradients, the improved smudge tool, the, the new two-point perspective tool. I'm curious to hear what you think of Krita in general, what do you think of this improvement? What do you think of the, the speed at which Krita has been improving? Because Krita was like a really cool kind of almost toy program for a while and then about the version three ish it like went gangbusters it's sort of like the the staggering level of improvement that blender made a couple of times when it went from like 2.4 and then beyond and then when it went to 2.8 with ev and uh all the other things that they've added in. Uh, Krita kind of did the same thing around three when they started adding animation support. And then since then, it's just been exploding with how fast it's developed. So uh, if you're looking for a sketching, painting, drawing kind of application, uh, Krita is definitely one to check out, especially because it's free, it's open source, it's available on most major platforms and uh, it's improving at a heck of a great rate. So what what do you think of Krita? If you do not use it, do you use something else? Maybe a Corel Painter or uh, you know something in Adobe Suite? Curious to know, let me know. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.